I use my salty tears to mark the specific scenes and pages that broke my heart and brought me pain. I was on a period too when I was reading it, so it was just my emotions were just. I cried a lot while reading that book. When they returned my book, it was all wet and wrinkled. Well, it was no longer wet. It was all wrinkled and damaged. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. How are you all? I hope you are doing great. Today, I am talking about different ways and methods I use to annotate my books. Yes, I do annotate my books. I know some people think annotating is the same thing as destroying their books. You can't write on your books, you can't highlight, and you can't put stickers, nothing. Just keep the book good as new. I used to be that kind of person. Don't get me wrong, there's, there's literally nothing wrong with it. It's your book, do whatever you want with it. I just, I like annotating now. I didn't before. I remember being so shocked when I saw my friend uh, we were reading the same book at the same time. She had her own copy, I had my own copy. And she highlighted this one sentence. And she took a picture of it and showed it to me, sent it to me. And when I saw it, I was like, girl, what are you doing? Why? Like, I was just so shocked. Like, why would you highlight it? Like, you're destroying the book. Why? I didn't get it before, but now... Again, I love annotating. I feel like it's because I like journaling. I like, you know, writing things down as memories. So annotating for me kind of became like journaling in a way because I write down my emotions, my thoughts as I am reading or rereading the book. So it's just it's just really fun for me. It's like I'm making the book personalized. It's my own book. You can see it because when you open it, you can see my thoughts. You can see my emotions right there on the book. It's written there. So it's just, it's my own book. It's not just a copy of a book, if you know what I mean. Anyways, um, let's start with the first method that I use to take my books. This first one is actually the most popular, I guess, way of annotating and, annotating? annotating and taking notes on your books. And it is the color coding method slash tabbing slash highlighting method. So I used a color coding system just like a lot of other people on the internet who love annotating. Um, they use tabs, highlighters, different colored pens. I have everything I need, almost everything I need here. I don't have my tabs here. Um, most of my tabs are on my bookshelves and the other ones are behind me in one of the drawers behind me. So this is what I use. I use highlighters, different colored pens, the usual. I don't think there's anything unique about that. Depending on the book I'm reading, I change the color coding system slash categories, the color categories. Um, but I usually follow one system unless I decide to change it because it's my system, it's my books. I use orange, yellow, pink, purple, blue, and green. Oh my goodness, did I just forget that color? Okay, so I use these six colors and I guess let me just start with the first color, which is orange. Color number one is orange. I use orange for literary devices and writing styles and anything basically that highlights the author's skill in writing. For example, if I am reading uh, the last chapter um, not the last chapter, the last sentence or last paragraph of a chapter and it is a very well written cliffhanger that would be in orange because good writing style. I also use orange for scenes that make me stop breathing and make me feel as if I'm really watching like a Netflix show or a movie that is well directed, well produced. 
that's orange for me. Good writing style. Color number two. Oh! Color number two is pink. Pink is for anything cute and lovely. For example, lovely scenes, cute scenes, beautiful scenes with beautiful scenarios, beautiful locations, places, beautiful people, anything cute. Someone says something cute, I just highlight it in pink. Anything cute is pink for me. My camera just died on me. And I don't know if the first part of this video was saved. I hope it's saved here somewhere. But anyways, color number three is green. Green is for quotes. Quotes that I would want to put uh, right in my journal or sentences that I would use as Instagram captions or sentences that I'd want to retort with when I'm mad or arguing with someone. Not that I argue with people a lot. Um, it's just things that I like, phrases that I resonate with that will be green. Color number four is yellow. I use yellow for foreshadowing. Um, if I'm reading and I feel like something is going to happen, I'm going to predict it. I will highlight it in yellow and then I would write my prediction. Like for example, oh this person is going to betray this other character or whatever or this person is going to die in uh, the next few chapters or whatever. Um, I'm just going to highlight it in yellow and then write my prediction so that I can come back to it and see if I was right. Color number five is blue. Blue is technically for romance. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be like canon, I guess. Romance, I don't necessarily have to ship the characters either, but if I like the interaction between one character and another character, I would usually highlight it blue or tab it blue or whatever. Um, sometimes I would use a blue pen if I hate the main couple. Like, I don't know why, but sometimes I just like, you know, when it, especially when it's insta-love, I'm like, you met this person like two minutes ago. How are you in love so suddenly? Like, it's just, what? I don't get it. I would use blue because it's supposed to be like romantic, but I don't get what's romantic about it. So I would still use blue and kind of just complain about it. Lastly is color um, purple. I use purple for anything um, information, info dump, anything that has to do with a plot, characters or whatever. Usually when I first meet the main character, I would highlight or circle or whatever um, in purple, which means it's information that I would want to remember so that when I am in the middle of reading and I don't remember who's this character, what is this place, what happened here, what happened 10 years ago or whatever, um, I can just come back to previous chapters and look at my purple um, highlights and kind of find the information that I'm looking for. So those are all of the colors, color coding system that I use. Usually, again, I change it depending on the book. Um, I use highlighters, I use tabs and pens. I also use the highlighters to color the edge of the page. Um, Sometimes I just color the edge of the page, but usually I would use the colored tabs. But if I don't want to use the tabs, I would color the edge of the page or I would just do both. As I mentioned before, the color coding system that I use is modified a little bit depending on the book that I'm reading. So for example, in the Harry Potter um, series, my annotations there, I follow the system plus I used the orange tab for any information about the world, but to differentiate it from the literary devices that I normally use orange for, I would put it on the page vertically. And the vertical yellow tabs are for shocking scenes, revelations, and plot twists. And for the Throne of Glass series, I annotated my books on my reread. So instead of lovely scenes, I use pink for anything that connects to the sequels. For example, if character 
B is alone in the current book, but I know that they will need characters T and S in the sequel, then I would write in pink, Aw, don't worry, you will meet whatever blah 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 soon, heart heart or whatever. It's similar to how I use yellow for foreshadowing, but I would say pink is specifically for spoilers, so I won't really lend it to a friend so they can avoid spoilers but honestly i don't really lend my books to anyone ever since that time i did lend my book to a friend i guess and when they returned my book it was all wet and wrinkled well it was no longer wet it was all wrinkled and damaged because apparently her little brother spilled water or milk or whatever it was on my book and she was okay with returning my book so damaged like have you no shame my friend i don't know why but yeah at another time i lend a friend this three in one book it wasn't one book i mean it was one bound book like that but it was three in one and she never returned it so um i do not lend my books to anyone i mean if i'm being generous then Sure, I can lend you my book. You can borrow my book if you want, but you have to be in my house, in my room specifically, right in front of my bookshelf, where I can watch you, how you are handling my precious book. You can't take it out. Like, you just can't. I'm the only one who can take it out of my house because it's mine, you know? And I know that I'm gonna take care of it. But someone else, I just, I just don't trust them. Especially because now that I annotate my books, it's just even more precious to me because my thoughts and my emotions are with that book. And I cannot repeat the same thing, you know what I mean? Like you can't read a book for the first time ever again. And so I can't, I just can't repeat that kind of feeling that is already written and annotated in that book. So I just don't want anyone destroying that memory. You know what I mean? It's like a souvenir for me. For mangas, I only use one color for everything and I don't write on the pages. And for the books that I tabbed and or annotated before having this system, I have no idea what the colors stand for or if they even mean anything. Also, if my emotions towards a certain book are overflowing, a tabbing storm happens and that aquawar tabbing storm thing happened because i was so attached to echo math so when i got aquawar i was just so sad because i didn't want it to end i didn't want Feyre's story to end i just i just wanted it to be there you know what i mean like i don't want to read it i just want it to be there but I wanted to read it at the same time because I wanted to know what was going to happen and so it was just, I was on a period too when I was reading it so it was just, my emotions were just I cried a lot while reading that book I know some people hate the books but I love it I love it so much so um, yeah that is the first method of annotating that I use my second method for annotating is using washi tapes and this one i don't really have a color coding system i just really pick whatever washi tape i fancied at the moment or sometimes i just pick the washi tape that kind of matches the color or theme of the book one way i use washi tapes is i just put washi tape on the page and then i mark because the pages are back to back so i just mark one page that actually has the thing that I love with um, a pen that corresponds to my color coding system for example it's mostly like a romantic scenes and I really liked it so I would put a washi tape and I would put um, like just a line with blue to kind of remind me that you'll like the scene because of the romantic um, moment of the two characters and to give an example, I like the whole 120th page of Sarge Mass's Crown of Midnight paperback edition because I saw this particular scene in my head. It was like a movie, so in orange, but at the same time, it has the washi tape marker because I would read it 
over and over and over and over again. And these are also good markers to come back to years later when I wonder what it is that I loved about the book. The second way I use washi tape is to mark characters' appearances. I just write the name beside the washi tape and a short description of the character. And if there's a heart next to the new character, it most likely is an annotation made during a reread because I mean, how can I know that I will love a character if they just been introduced? Yeah, does that make sense? Okay. The third way I use washi tape is to indicate the pages in which I wrote the story so far. Basically a summary that's quite self-explanatory. I write a summary of the last few pages or chapters in point form and I don't count the pages in between, like I don't do it every 50 pages or every 100 pages or whatever. I just write a summary whenever I see a blank space but this depends on how long each chapter is. I may write a summary after 74 pages or 39 pages or after one chapter. And I also like to include page numbers because it makes things easier if I want to reread a specific scene and I won't have to scan through the entire book to go back to that certain scene because I have the page numbers written on each summary. If a book is quite long, I also use washi tape to separate different arcs. I just basically put the washi tape and then I write my kind of own arc title or own um, chapter title on the page. I did this in The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I used random titles like The Story Begins or Ben or Darkness or Jesus Fanfic, which leads us to the third method of annotating that I use and that is adding unnecessary titles. I just, I have no rule or system for this whatsoever. I just, after reading a scene or a chapter, if I feel like I can, I can think of a title that suits the chapter, I would write it down. I just add titles whenever the situation calls for it. It's not even the whole chapter. Sometimes I just name a scene because why not? Totally unnecessary, but it's fun. Or if the chapters have titles, I write why it's named like that. And also, I like circling the name of the chapter or the title. Does that make sense? Like, for example, for example, if the name of the book is Dark Dawn or the name of the chapter is Dark Dawn, and then I find the word Dark Dawn in the chapter, I would like circle it and like, yay, I found it, like that. So yeah. My fourth way of annotating is by encircling unknown words, words unknown to me, and writing their definition on the margins on the side of the pages or wherever there's space available. I would just write the definition there. And um, this one's just self-explanatory. I don't think I need to elaborate on this. Whenever I'm reading, there will always be a word that I do not know, I do not understand. So I will look it up on the dictionary and I will write the definition on the page margins. If I don't feel like I will remember even the definition, I would even um, draw a really bad illustration of the word. Yes. My fifth way of annotating is art. I just draw on the pages when I feel like it. I draw symbols or characters, animals, places, or even memes. It just depends on my mood. Also, if there is a certain fan art out there that's been popularized on Instagram or Twitter, I would usually save it, print it, and just kind of stick it onto the book just so I have like a good illustration of certain scenes um, on the book. My sixth method is page references and this is particularly helpful in large thick books. For example, in the book The Name of the Wind, I can connect information faster and easier when the page numbers are right in front of my face. This is easy especially when I am um, 
predicted something and something actually happened i can kind of just connect it so i would write page 200 here and then page 100 or whatever you get what i mean page references very helpful my seventh method of annotating is what i call the black pen of emotions i use a black pen to write any thoughts and feelings I have about certain scenes. These usually don't fall under the colored categories, that's why they're in black, but they're just as important, sometimes even more. I also use the black pen of emotions for my eighth, eighth, eighth method of annotating, which is kind of the same thing, but I call it the chaos annotating. So for chaos annotations, I don't just highlight or tab, or write on the margins, I write on the text. I write in big, bold letters. This is usually for when I can't contain my emotions and just like <sighs> screaming at the book, throwing the book and all that. I would pick it up and then write on it like, no, you didn't just do that or whatever. Um, yeah. Annotating method number nine, I believe is one that I use a lot, but it's very fun for me to do, at least. And that is taking selfies as I read books and then printing them and then putting it in the book um, in between the pages of specific scenes so I can actually see what my face looked like as I was reading that specific passage and it's very fun for me i find it entertaining i find other people find it entertaining as well so i would actually recommend it if you want to do it especially if you know that it's a book that will have a lot of plot twists or just sad scenes if you want pictures of you crying then why not right yeah the last and least used method for annotating that I do is what I call theory markers. What is it and how does it work, you ask? Well, my friend, I use my salty tears to mark the specific scenes and pages that broke my heart and brought me pain. What I do is I just basically cry while reading. Obviously, when I'm crying, I cry and then instead of wiping my tears, I just let the tears fall onto the page and then I use this black uh, pen of emotions to circle the circumference of the tear because it's going to dry and I want um, a souvenir of my tears, of my pain, you know what I mean? So I would just do that and it's just really fun to look at after I'm done crying it's just fun and that way i can laugh at my past self for crying over the death of a fictional character it's just how it is i do use a different annotating method for when i'm reading books in my target languages slash languages that i'm trying to learn different annotations obviously different purposes if you want to know how i annotate those books then let me know if not it's okay i won't make a video about it or maybe i will we'll see so to recap, the 10 methods I use for annotating when I'm reading a fictional book are number one, the color coding system. Number two, the washi tapes. Number three, unnecessary titles. Number four, encircling unknown words. Number five, art. Number six, page references. Number seven, the black pen of emotions. Number eight, the chaos annotations number nine, the selfies, and number 10, the teary markers. So that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, but only if you want to. I'm not forcing you, and I will see you in my next video. Have a great day. Bye!